Ever wonder what it was like growing up along the lakeshore in the 1950s or just growing up in the 1950s? Author Dave Crehor will take you through the pastures of local farms and up the aisles of old churches. His book, Sweet and Sour Pie, will take you back in time to life in Manitowoc. And through all of the adventures, both outdoors and in, readers will find a central theme, and that is family. And Dave joins us now to tell us more about his book. Good morning. Good morning. Okay, now you spent most of your life working for the Wisconsin DNR. Is that right? 30 years. That's, a, that's significant, <laughs> 30 years. But the, the book doesn't focus on your adventures with the DNR. It's really about family? It's about my family and my parents, myself, grandparents, great-grandparents. And uh, the times we went through basically in the 50s when I was growing up, both in Manitowoc and a little bit in Ohio. Well, I was reading the part where you moved to Manitowoc and, and what it was like when you first got there and moved into the house. And one of my favorite parts, because I moved from Michigan to Wisconsin and also ran into that situation where people didn't know what pop was. <laughs> I want to drink a pop. What's a pop? It's soda. But little things like that is... Um, that you have peppered throughout your book. Do you think people are really going to be attracted to that? Well, I would, I would hope so. We're not trying to, of course, make fun of Northeast Wisconsin, but it has some peculiar characteristics. The way we talk. And uh, one of them being the famous query and so, which is tacked onto the end of every other sentence. It comes from the German, and it's a very, very polite thing to do, but it takes a little getting used to. What, um, what was your process in, in starting this book? You, you said to me during the break that you started back in the 80s just writing some of these stories down. I wanted to see if it was possible to tell old family stories that I thought were funny and to see if anybody else thought they were funny, and that turned out to be quite the trick. Uh, some of those old stories, when you try to write them down, wind up using up about a page and others might go on for thousands of words because you have to set the context. And uh, but I figured out basically how to do it. I had to be rather selective with the stories, both for libel reasons as well as to keep them funny. Because that's the, the real point of the book is humor, not so much nostalgia. Yeah, I think a lot of people, whether they're from Wisconsin, whether they grew up in the 50s, or if their folks grew up in the 50s, are really going to identify with a lot of the book. And it's easy reading. It's funny. It seems like you had the funniest family ever. Just capturing a bat in the house was a funny story. Um, why did you call it Sweet and Sour Pie? Well, that's the, actually, that was the publisher's idea. That's the name of one of the chapters in the book. And um, I guess they just decided it made a, made a good title. I had another one in mind, but that's long gone. And, and it's really not just a, it's not really a sweet and sour pie. It's alluding to the fact that there were good times and bad times in the 50s. That's, that's what it sort of symbolizes. But actually, it came from a friend of my parents uh, who invited us over for Thanksgiving dinner and then made apple pies without any sugar in them. And we soon, this was to save our teeth, but we soon discovered that they were inedible. In fact, one of the other guests, who was a doctor, referred to them as quinine, and that was the sour pie. There were, there's a lot, of, a lot more of them in the book that are sweet. It was in the same chapter you went on a date after a big Thanksgiving dinner, and I won't tell people how that ended. Uh, you'll have to read how that ended, that date. And, you know, there's other things in here about how to move a stubborn cow. If you've ever wanted to know, you have to read the book. It's called Sweet and Sour Pie, and you can meet the author tonight. You're going to be at the Reader's Loft? Yeah, from 7 on. I'll read part of the book and sign some copies if people want. And I'm sure share stories with people should, who remember the sure. times. I should also mention that this book will be read on Public Radio's Chapter a Day starting on the 6th of July. Awesome. Dave, thank you so much. You're welcome. Um, again, there it is, the information tonight at 7 at the Reader's Loft in Bellevue. For more information, you can go online, fox11online.com, and click on Good Day, Wisconsin.